Have you tapped into God's resource? Have you believed? Have, has the word abide in you? Don't give up. The answer's coming. He said, be not weary and well doing because you'll reap if you faint not. Keep your source of energy from God flowing freely. How do you do that? By keeping his word, saying his word, and believing his word. Three concepts. You got to say, you got to believe, and you got to keep the word of God. You got to keep it nigh thee. See, I preach a lot, and I don't have time to rest. So I sing a lot, and I ain't got time to rest this vocal cord. Now, my vocal cord is just like yours, and everybody's always telling me I'm trying to lose it. So when I begin to feel that raspiness come on, I look at myself, I find out I've tapped into God's resource on that. And I say, devil, in authority and the power of Jesus' name, God has anointed this throat. It will not be sick. I've got to sing tonight. I've got to preach tonight. I've got to minister the word of the Lord, and I might just holler tonight. Now, God, you just help it. And he said, okay. It's literally that fast. But I realized that. I, how do you do that? I said, hey, self. That's me. He said, what do you want? I said, get up there, brother. Let's go. You ever felt like not preaching, brother? You ever walked up in front of this pulpit? Now, just be honest and say, see y'all later, man. <laughs> Forget it. I'm going on vacation. You go on vacation, you sneak in town because you know you don't want nobody to know you there. And 14,000 preachers say, hey, man, why don't you come preach? <laughs> say, do you love to preach? Sure. But you don't want to preach that week. But then you find yourself in the pulpit before you know it and you enjoy it yourself. <laughs> Every time we went on vacation, we went to a convention. It used to run me up a tree. When I was a kid... Dad said, we going on vacation. I said, why are we going to Florida? He said, no, nah, man, we going to a convention. I said, oh, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All day, three services a day. <laughs> My Lord. i never forget that. We went to one one time. Me, Mike Murdoch, Alton Garrison, David Sapp, a little bitty fella then. He had his brother, Mac Sapp. We started playing. We was going to play the song service at 9 o'clock. We quit the song at 6 o'clock that afternoon. I'm telling you the truth. We played from 9 in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. What happened? We had to have healings of our fingers, brother. <laughs> happened in Golden, Louisiana at a convention. Say, was it fun? What do you think? <laughs> then people shouted from 9 to 6. Why? Somebody tapped into God's resource. <laughs> the word was abiding. Word was abiding. Word was coming out of their mouths. They were speaking. People were getting healed, blessed, and touched everywhere. And I said, she said, she come running up to me. Now, you know, when a woman come running up to you, you ain't no telling what she's going to do. <laughs> I had some of them not stop. <laughs> and, you know, some, I, had, I prayed for one lady that jumped into a guitar case one time. <laughs> so what happened? I had to pray for the musician. It was his guitar case. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, I, I, I mean, the Holy Ghost get the flat going sometimes. I've been preaching and people have been under the benches. I've been preaching like this. <laughs> what happened? The Holy Ghost knock them all down. What do you want me to do? I got to see somebody. Hey! I've had that happen to me. Yes. I said, I knew she's coming for prayer. I said, she's coming, boy. I mean, she's flat hooked up running. I said, you coming from prayer, huh? She said, yes. I went, Father, touch her in the name of Jesus. Boom, man. I was <laughs> She got up and said, I don't tell you something, young man. She said, you know, when you prayed for me last year? I said, yeah. She said, you know, I had kidney stones. I said, you did. She said, but I ain't got them no more. She said, you want a pizza? <laughs> oh I said, you know, from kidney stones to pizza, it blows you away sometimes, you know. I said, no, thank you. I said, I just thought I'd buy you one. I'm excited. She said, my husband's really excited because he didn't have to pay for him. <laughs> she said, what happened? She said, what? She said, when you touch me, something happened. I said, honey, I didn't touch you. I said, your faith touched God. I just agreed what you were saying and spoke God's word and the power of attorney that we have in Jesus' name. Tap into God's resource, people. Oh, then you'll see mountains plucked up and removed. Hallelujah, that's truth. Yes, you'll begin to see things you never thought possible. You'll begin to realize, wait a minute, man. This creator can do something. But what people have defeated more than anything in the world is that ever, ever constant fear that God may not do it. And you know why? And a lot of times it don't happen 
And some people said, I believe as far as I believe, but I, 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 don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Fear. 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 It's a terrible and ghastly thing. Adam never realized what it was till he ate of the fruit. And God said, Adam, where are you? He said, I was naked. Who told you that? He feared to walk in the presence of God. I realized, I've, pr I've prayed a lot of prayers that have not been answered. you know why? Because as I began to study and pray, I found out that when I prayed, I didn't pray in faith. I prayed in the hope that maybe so, maybe, maybe so. If I could hang on by my fingernails. And I always thought God didn't answer my prayer. And then I read Jeremiah 15, verse 16. It said, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. And in 1975, in a pew at Terrebonne Full Gospel Temple, at a, on a Sunday morning, just got called by the Lord of the host. And I knew something was put into plan. Read that with us. I want to read it again. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Read this. It's a bless your spirit. Jeremiah, that's in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Oh, this blesses me because it's reality to me. I had tapped into God's resource. I found out I was chosen and called. Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. That means he was abiding in the word, and the word was abiding in him because he ate them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. He tried to quit preaching one time, and he couldn't because he was burning his guts out. A man that is called to preach, he got his preach. Amen. He'll preach to a dog if the dog will sit down long enough. Because <laughs> he's called by God. He tapped into God's resource. Have you tapped into God's resource? Have you believed Jesus' word? Is the word abiding in you and you abiding in the word? Let me give you an example of tapping into a resource, a physical example. I went to work for Texaco when I was 19, excuse me, 18 and a half years old as a flunky. A flunky is a kitchen helper. You wash pots. And I, <laughs> you feed bunches of men. And some of these pots you could get inside with a Brillo pad. You could stand up in them and wash them. I mean, they cook men five-gallon pots. I mean, there ain't nothing to see five gallons or, or a gallon, two gallons of beans. With no, that's nothing. I mean, you know, when you're feeding 700 men in Kai Island, brother, that's a, that's a lot of men. They eat a lot. Well, they sent me to a place called Dog Lake. <laughs> Don't ever go to Dog Lake. You could say it was offshore because you couldn't come in. I was working six and six. The cook that I was working for was an alcoholic. But they had a tool pusher out there, which was the head of the rig named Elmore Cochran, which I liked him, and he liked me. He the boss. I always like to get close to the boss. And I just smile at him. Mr. Cochran, he like, he said, I like you, Jesse. I said, I like you too, Mr. Cochran. Would you think I'm going to tell him I don't? He the boss. <laughs> and sometimes he'd wake up with the flunkies at 3.30 in the morning so we could get ready for the food for breakfast because the guys got up at 5.00. He'd come in there and he'd sit down and talk with us, which is kind of odd because most of the big bosses don't do that to the little help. But I liked him. He liked me. Now, me and the cook did not like each other at all. And the reason for that, I threw a 100-pound sack of rice at him one time. And he weighed 96. <laughs> you can imagine the rice was on top of him. His name was Carlos. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Whew. So he didn't like me, but he knew Elmar did. And I took advantage of that. 
So he tell me to do something. I said, well, I better check Mr. Cochran about that. He said, <clears throat> yeah, oh, yeah, 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 you better check Mr. Cochran about that. But he didn't like that, see? Well, Mr. Cochran said, you know, Jesse, he said, got a lot of dirt divers on my office. Mud, you know, they make mud houses. He said, I want you to get a hose, and I want you to wash my office down in the front. I said, yes, sir, Mr. Cochran, I'll do that. And I want to please him, you know why? Because he's going to talk to the boss, but I might get me a raise. So I went and tried to find me a hose pipe and couldn't find one. Finally, I said, hey, Mr. Cochran, I said, we don't have a hose pipe that'll go that far. He said, well, how you going to wash it? I said, I don't know. Then I looked around and saw a fire hose. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you the truth. I done tapped into the source. He said, uh, I can use that fire hose. You want me to use that thing? He said, you think you can hold that? I'm not 18 and a half. I can hold anything. <laughs> you know, you sure ain't going to tell it. You know how boys are. They think they're something, man. Got the little Cheerio in their arm, you know. <laughs> Been eating sugar crisp, frosted flakes, Tony the Tiger. You know, that kind of stuff. I said, I can hold that hose, Mr. Cochran. He said, I think got a lot of pressure on it. I said, I can handle it. He said, I believe you can, Jess. I said, I know I can. He said, well, hook it on up. He said, make sure the pump now is down. Don't, don't, don't open that pump wide open. I said, okay, I won't. Little did I realize the pump was 25 years old. Salt water, that eats up a pump. Eat up anything out there. I hooked that fire hose up that crazy thing. Boy, and I pulled on like a little <laughs> nothing. But I mean, I pulled, jerked my arm. I couldn't hardly get it started. So I said, wait a minute, man. I found me some gasoline, man. And I pulled it right on the spark plug, man. I said, make that thing. Something going to fire in a minute. <laughs> Boy, I hit it and it went. Bup, 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 bup. I said, all right. You know, well, <laughs> I hooked that thing up, you know, and I had, had a little gauge on there. It said wide open, you know, and I, so I put it down and the water come out. Shh. I said, I cracked it open a little more. Oh, I said, whoa, that's a big stream. Man. So I pulled it back a little bit. So I rolled that thing out, you know, and, then, and a, a four-inch fire hose, big, pretty big hose, but it's flat. See, now I'm holding it, got a brass nozzle on it like this. So I go out there, and I'm going, and all of a sudden it goes, pull, 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 nothing. Didn't get all the dirt divers, you know. So I went back over that crazy pump. Pull on that thing, boom, 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 boom. Pulled on it, nothing. Poured gasoline on a spark plug. He went, pull, pull, pull. And I said, what? And I kicked that cold pump. Boom. And I hit it. He went, pull, 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 pull. I said, all right. But I kicked the nozzle. I walked over there and grabbed that thing. Mr. Cochran come out there and he said, I'm coming out the door, Jesse. Watch out. So I pulled the hose over like that. And when he come out, he looked. And he said, look out, boy. And when I looked, I saw that hose go, boom. You know, you see that water running down that fire? Oh, Jesus, man. I had not kicked the valve loose because of the salt water. That thing hit me when it hit me. Woo-doo. <laughs> I mean, I was blowing everything inside. I mean, it blew the hose, man. I always thought I could. You can't hold no fire hose. That's why you see two or three firemen, man. I hold, I mean, I said, help, help. And I, I mean, it was flipping like this. I was going. <laughs> I mean, it's the craziest thing you ever see. And brother, <laughs> Mr. Cocker said, help him, help him, man. And I said, help, help. I mean, I blew the windows out the place. <sighs> I mean, I cleaned that office, brother. I'm knocking boards down with that pressure of that hose. But I knew if I turned loose of that thing, it would start whipping and beat my brains out. So I was holding on, flipping, brush burn, knocked down. I mean, flipping me all over. I done tapped into the source. I realized the power of the hose. And guess what? Don't never point a hose at an electric socket. I hit a socket. The electricity coming up the line at water. I said, I mean, flipping all over the place. Mr. Cochran took off running. Old Carlos come out there and he see me going boring, boring, looking like a crazy fool out there. Mr. Cox said, stop that pump. They start kicking that pump. And I said, don't kick the pump. <laughs> don't kick the pump. They kicked that pump. <laughs> they, kicked the, they kicked the spark plug off that thing and finally, da-da-da. 
I mean, I was all cut and bruised. I felt stupid. Mr. Cocker come on and say, you hurt? I say, it's clean, Mr. Cocker. It's clean. He said, Jesse, this is the cleanest this building's ever been in its life. He said, you could have got killed, boy. And all them crazy walls standing out there going, zzzz. Oh, Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> what happened, man? I didn't realize the power. I had tapped into it at a very low speed till I kicked that crazy thing. And it, like, kicked me. I had tapped into the resource. I mean, I had a four-inch line, brother, coming at full volume. I couldn't hold it. You see, we need to get our four-inch line to God at full volume. You're not going to be able to hold it. You know what's going to happen? You're going to blow anointing all over everybody. Everybody comes in contact with you. Going to see you jumping, screaming, hollering, flipping all over the place. They're going to say, what's your God? Say, I don't know, but it's hot, brother. And when that water, and that water, the anointing all begins to hit people, it's going to heal people, save people, touch people. You're going to get somebody's attention. I had tapped into the source. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. You, if you've asked God for something, I'm going to say a statement that maybe some of you may not agree with. If you've asked God for something and it did not come to pass. And some people say, I guess we didn't ask according to God's will. God is sovereign. Remember that. He does what he want to do. But if you put him in remembrance of his word and not doubt in your heart, but believe. That those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have what you say. Or God is lying. And we don't need theologians with books to tell us what he said. Say, well, did I miss it? I didn't say you did. I said you may have been developed in one resource of God and not the other. See, there's a lot of people. See, let me say this in close. Pentecostal people. When I mean by Pentecostal, I mean Church of God, Assembly of God, full gospel, united Pentecostal. Everybody that teaches a born-again experience in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a lot of them know the Word of God. And they believe in the fullness thereof. Complete. They believe in the fullness. But they haven't tapped into each resource of that fullness. They've tapped into it in the realm of salvation. You can't tell an assembly of God man or a full gospel man or a church of God man or a United Pentecostal or First Pentecostal that he's not saved. He laugh at you. And you know what? He cannot prove that he is from a physical standpoint of view. He cannot do that. He can't show you a contract that an angel gave him that said he was saved. He said that by faith. He received that by faith and tapped into God's resource. That word, that salvation word abides in him. And when you tell him he's not saved, he just, he totally rejects it. He just goes on to, it, it don't even buy. he says, man, the man don't know what he's talking about. But he may not be developed on the healing realm that way. And he may not be developed on the financial realm. You know why? Because for the last 900 centuries, we've been preached Salvation, which is the greatest thing in the Bible. It's the greatest miracle in the world. And we're completely planning into God's kingdom in the realm of salvation. You can't tell an assembly of God man that he's not saved. You can't tell a full gospel person that he's not saved. Because he's been taught that. And that's been drilled in him. And that word salvation is living in him. And there ain't no man or devil or demon in hell can tell him that he's not. And he'll go to the grave saying he is. You know why? Because he's been taught that. 
but he hasn't been taught healing as strong as salvation. And yet, Jesus bore our sicknesses on the cross at the time that he bore our sins. Why is it much easier to get saved than it is to get healed? It's not. That's why you'll see somebody go to Catherine Coleman's meeting before she died. Don't even know Jesus. Get saved. And say, man, that lady wasn't lying to me. That's a, that's a lady from the Lord. And get healed immediately. And the person that's been saved for 29 years can't seem to get a healing. You know why? Because they've got smart. But this one came as a child. That must be true. Or otherwise, that lady or that man would have not said that. See, they're like a baby. You put them on top of this roof and say, jump, sweetheart. They jump. They bail out, brother. Would you jump down if I said jump? You'd say, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. You see, the older we get in God, the quicker we ought to jump. But we don't. That's not God's fault. The longer you're with the Lord, the more you ought to be in his care and all your cares are upon him. You always hear this phenomenal saying, all them baby Christians get everything they want. You know why? Because they come to their father and say, dad, dad. And they expect a result. And they get it. But that 17-year-old Christian come up there and say, I'm a man. Listen, God, uh, you said, he said, I'll do it for you. I'll give you the car this week. Uh, can I see the keys? See what I'm saying? I'll say this in close. You take one baby in this building that can barely walk. And if you're eating something and that baby walk up to you and go, you're going to give them some food. Amen. And that may not be your child. You see, when I go to a park sometime, I, and if I'm drinking a Coke or whatever it is, and I see a kid, and he look at me and go, I don't know who that kid is. He's going to get my Coke. He'll get my hamburger. I'll buy him one if his mama lets me. And that's how these baby Christians get theirs. Dad, dad. They're abiding in the word. They just trust God so much. They just believe him. So as you grow in God, grow in faith, and grow in trust, and tap into God's resource, and when you grow as you grow, all these things, brother, when you're a 40-year-old Christian, you'll be matured in Jesus' word, complete full soldier, but you'll come to the kingdom and say, Hey, Dada, Abba, Father. He said, that's my boy. Come here. Everybody bow your heads. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.